Good evening and welcome back to Qatar. We're in the centre of Doha, just outside the middle of the city centre at the Lusail Shooting Complex. One year on from the FIFA World Cup, it's now the ISSF World Cup final. And this is 2023's culmination competition at the end of a very long calendar and a very long year as well. So the Lusail Football Stadium just down the road that was the host for the World Cup final. Just We're here in these glorious conditions. And the wind, well, died down just a little bit. It was up to about 10 metres per second earlier on. Then it dropped to about eight and now down to seven. So my name is Rory McAllister. I'll be your commentator. Alongside me is Eleanor Allen. Hello, good evening. Hello. Unprecedented circumstances. This is the first scheduled floodlit final. Uh, there were some ski finals earlier on in the year, and now it's the turn uh, for the trap final. So I won't give away the results of the women's trap. Uh, we were trying to bring some interviews for you as well, but just due to the scheduling, we were unable to talk to the medalists and finalists of the women's trap. But if you have just joined us and would like to watch that final back, then we won't. We for one uh, won't be giving away the result for you. We'll let you take that in for your own enjoyment. Uh, so, Eleanor, you've just witnessed the women's trap final. Just your thoughts then so far. Again, we're not going to give away the result of the actual final, but um, in terms of uh, the conditions here, we're just seeing on our screens, everything else is the same there. We're happy with that. Uh, 24.5 grams in terms of the cartridge shot weight with a slight differential allowed there of 0.5. So everything is the same. Happy there. Are you happy now with the floodlit conditions? Well, I think the guys will probably also struggle slightly. Maybe for those who've already shot under flight lights in the past, they might not struggle, but the, the ones who haven't probably will might take a few shots to, to readjust. Um, after the women's final, I just had a quick word with one of the finalists, and um, she found that the lower targets were a little bit harder to, to shoot because she was losing the sight of them purely because of the difference in the lighting conditions. But I can certainly say from um, a point of view of someone who is watching uh, the final, it was much more interesting. Uh, the smoke is fantastic, the, um, the powder uh, you see when the, um, the shot, the target is hit, it's just so much more colourful and just the conditions themselves make it a little bit more of a big show. Yeah, it certainly brought a, an edge of excitement to it, and I think that an extra challenge, um, because personally for me, I think both across skeet and trap, the athletes are getting so good that I think an, an additional challenge is, is needed, particularly in skeet. We see so many 60 out of 60s, and in trap, yes, the same can happen, um, although it, it, it's more unusual to, to, to get the, the person Now, we're going to do shotgun finals at night uh, in the same way that other sports would do that. I mean, there are sports that go later into like boxing, for example. You know, Tyson Fury's been fighting out in this part of the world, and that goes on from you know midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., things like that, to suit television times around the world. Um, but it's certainly interesting. Yeah, and I think if the, the viewing figures prove us that this is the more interesting format to watch then I don't see why we we couldn't have this in the night because we're not going to survive as a sport um, in the Olympic movement unless we do something that attracts viewing figures so who knows maybe there is a future to this and as you said Rory yes I think you do have a point the scores have been getting high and we certainly this would certainly separate shooters a bit more, make it a bit more interesting to watch. Shooters will probably not agree, but, well, there's not much you can do about that. Well, sometimes as well, that's 
and I, I, you know, in the world of professional sport, of course, sometimes you have to take it the rough, rough with the smooth. But I know it doesn't roll like that for everybody. Not everyone can be completely professional and, and, and funded and, and all the rest of it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's it's certainly interesting anyway. Put, yes. it, put it that way here. And this is a glorious complex. It's a massive site as well. I mean, it's hard to even comprehend to you if you're watching at home how big this complex actually is. I mean, we tend to take golf buggies from here and there. One of those reasons, obviously, is because of the heat that's here, but also just because the site's so big. And it's not because we're being lazy, but sometimes in, in TV, you need to move around the site quite quickly. There's interviews to be done with, with athletes, and you have to be from one location to the next. And unfortunately, I even I haven't still mastered how to be in two places at once. <laughs> The only time I've ever managed that is when I've recorded something and it's played out in one location and then I'm live in another. So Jamie Stangroom is the announcer representing Great Britain and we're just getting underway with the first British athlete in this final and this is Matt Coward-Holly, who we spoke to earlier on this week. And he's certainly got his sights on Paris. Needs to pick up a quota place though in between time. started out as a rugby player in his younger teens and because of injuries and two bro broken vertebrae took up shooting after starting it with his father and then just got a lot more serious started winning competitions and now here is Matt standing on the world stage the bronze medalist from the Tokyo Olympics and I was there to watch that one myself it was a great moment for him so the next athlete that was introduced is Marianne Kovacocci representing Slovakia, gold medalist at the World Championships in Maribor back in 2009, 2009. But also a silver medalist at Baku at the World Championships this year. And here's Nathan Hales, the second British athlete, 27 years old, number eight in the world. He's a great guy to be around, is Nathan. We had some good fun at the European Championships in Oshek, some good laughs. Even me bombing in on his FaceTime to his other half. Sometimes you just have to say hello. And this is Abdel Aziz Makelba representing Egypt. Bronze medalist at the World Cup in Larnaca earlier on this year. And now 34 years old. Next athlete to come in. The Italian, 37 years old, Daniele Resca. Gold medalist at the World Championships in Moscow 2017. And now the Olympic champion, gold medalist in the trap from the Tokyo Games, Shiri Liptak. 41 years old now, world number seven. So we have the gold and bronze medalist in this final from the Tokyo Games. That's Jiri Liptak, who you're looking at right now, the gold medalist. And then the first athlete to be introduced, Matt Coward-Holly, just off to the right of your screen there, the bronze medalist in that trap final. So now the introduction of the ref and the jury. So Nuruddin Alyassi from the Kingdom of Bahrain is our jury. Nasser Al Nubi from the native country of Qatar, or the state of Qatar is the actual official name of this country that claimed independence back in 1971. Population in Qatar of just under 2.8 million people, and 80% of the population actually live in Doha. So MJ Coward Holly, that stands for Matthew John Coward Holly, 122 in the qualification. At one point, Matt hadn't missed. Uh, but this afternoon and today, I think just a couple of misses crept in. Kovacci and Hales both on 121. And that's therefore then how they line up in terms of the qualification that's now converted into bib numbers. So Coward Holly with one on his back. And then Marianne Kovacocci with two. Nathan Hales in bib number three. Abdul Aziz Mahalba with four. 
Daniele Lesca, of Italy, with five on his bag, and Shiri Liptak of the Czech Republic, wearing bib number six. So two British athletes in this final, two British people behind the microphone. <laughs> It's lovely to see our guys making such a strong appearance in a final. And not any final, but a World Cup final. So I hope we do get a medal or maybe even two. Being a bit biased here, obviously. <laughs> but well, I don't think there's, there's anything, there's it, nothing wrong with that, is there? Well, in my professional <laughs> background working for the British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, I've always been taught and trained to stay impartial and I do pride myself on doing that through commentary. So as a co-commentator, Eleanor, perhaps you're able to get away with it today. That's but it, that's right. I myself will be taking the professional line. So thank you to Mario Filipovic for giving us a wave. It's always nice. I mean, we wave back and then you can't see. That's, that's the only problem. Marco Conti clearly texting somebody saying, get on ISSF TV right now, go to YouTube, go to Facebook. Using so if you're watching from home, watching on a tablet or on a phone, then your eyes do not deceive you. We are here in the presence of a floodlit final. And the local time here, just coming up to 6.40. Uh, as we get underway with this men's trap final. And we just start to have a look at some of these athletes in closer detail. There seems to be a bit of a delay. I'm not sure why they've just got the shooters off the uh, firing points. So I must have a little bit of a problem somewhere. So Nathan Hale's gold medalist in the ISSF World Cup, Lenato, earlier on this year, 2023, world number eight. A fairly decent European Championships as well. And Abdel Aziz Mehalba representing Egypt, bronze medalist in Larnaca at the World Cup earlier this year. That is the back of Matt Cowan Holly of Great Britain, bronze medalist at Tokyo in the trap final. Also a gold medalist at the World Championships in Lenato, that was 2019. Oh. Bronze medalist at the World Cup final in Larnaca 2022. And Coward Holly surprisingly opens up with a miss. As, as does Cavacocci. No, that is a hit indeed. Might just take a little bit of, a couple of shots for a few shooters though to get, just, oh. to get adjusted to these conditions. So Nathan Howes of Great Britain manages to nail his first one. If you are just joining us, then welcome. If you're live with us on YouTube or on Facebook, my name is Rory McAllister. I'm alongside Ellen. Ellen will be your commentators for this final. There's Daniele Resca. Oh. Now 37 years old, gold medalist at the World Championships in Moscow in 2017. At the Fox Lodge. It was my first trip to Moscow and haven't been back since, actually. Oh. So left-handed Nathan Hales, the world number eight, settles in and takes another target cleanly. Mahalba also with another hit. Ah. Oh. It's been quite a successful um, championship for the Mahelba family, oh. with his brother making the uh, skeet final earlier earlier today. So let's see if um, oh. he can bring a, a me another, well, another medal home. <laughs> yes, we would urge you to watch back the skeet final. It really was, well, it made history, oh. really. And it will be there for you on ISSF TV for you to watch back, and you can discover for yourself what happened. Oh. So, 
Daniele Rasca trying to make it three and does so. Ah. Here's the Olympic champion. So just to say, each athlete faces five targets. Oh. Two go off to the left, two go off to the right, and one down the middle. They are randomized as well by 15 oh. trap machines down in the bunker, out in front of oh. our athletes are standing and shooting from. And the heights, angles, it's all randomized. So oh. you didn't exactly know you can never exactly know where it's going to go you have an idea particularly if you've had two to the left two to the right oh. then you know that the fifth one is going to go down the middle oh. Oh. I don't know if you're aware already but uh Nathan has had a, a baby this year as well. Charlotte. He did mention this in the oh. summer, yes, whenever we were having discussions uh, about being being expecting fathers, yes. So um, I did speak to him in, the, in a week, a couple of days ago, but uh, he, didn't, uh, he didn't actually mention, mention anything. So uh, I'll have a chat with him about that, I'm sure. So after five, Matt Cowan Holly, who opened up with a miss, now trying to rectify that this time in this stage of the final. Oh. Just see how low as well uh, Comic Cat she is when he just goes to shoot like that. Ah. Watching the guys shoot, you wouldn't actually know it's dark. They're just getting on with it, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, business as usual. Um. I said, I do feel like I've turned up for like rugby training or something underneath the, the floodlights here oh. in the green grass around us. Just with extra smoke. Indeed, yes, but I just have to kind of shake my head and go oh. and realise, oh, no, actually, I'm in a uh, trap oh, final God, at the World Cup final. So, that is um, protesting. Obvious. obvious, he says. Okay, so just going to have a discussion. Matt thinks that the jury member saw his head. But it's the referee's deci decision which is final. And of course, as you say, without VAR or VAR, as um, it's sometimes called as well. That's the second miss for Matt Coward Holly, and that's a painful moment for the Tokyo bronze medalist. He's absolutely certain he's at least oh. clipped that target and that it should be a hit. I think it's always quite hard when you're on the receiving end, when you think you've hit it, whether you've hit it or not, that's fine. But when you feel you've hit it, you're given a miss, so then carry on. So he needs to regroup, otherwise he's not going to do well in this oh. final. It's, it's just one of those things. Oh, he's got plenty of experience, Matt, and I think that if he can control his mind, he'll certainly be able to control his abilities. Oh. Meanwhile, the Olympic champion, he marches on and goes up to five. And then we're back to Coward Holly for Great Britain. Oh. That was a clear hit. and. I think a oh. steely face of determination from I definitely hear got any argument with that. Oh. Nathan Hales, the second Briton in this final, also with a hit three in a row. Oh. Nathan is now up to eight. Ah. Oh. 
lip tack as well, just pretty quick there in, in terms of his reaction, and it was a miss. It looks as if he was just underneath that target. Nathan has had a fantastic year. I think having the, uh, the young baby certainly seems to have helped. <laughs> Maybe just concentrating or realising there's more to life than just shooting and being able to just shoot and put in good performances. Indeed, it can change your perspective as well. And still at only 27 oh. years old, there's still plenty of time ahead. <coughs> He's a very oh. talented trap shooter, as you say. And if his partner is listening, hi, Charlotte. Charlotte was my teammate. We went to the um, Beijing Olympics together and uh, we've done a couple of games as well. So. so Matt Coward Holly up to seven. She also on seven. Nathan Hales can get to double figures. Yes, he can. That's ten. And Mahel we're now also oh. looking to join double figures. He does so as well. Here's Daniele Resca. He's on nine. And oh. Liptak, the Olympic champion, moves up to seven. So after ten targets, this final, is it starting to take shape? A little bit, I'd say. Two athletes who are joined on ten. That's Nathan Hales and Mahelba of Egypt. Then Resca on nine. The rest are all on seven. And those bib numbers will come into effect should there be some ties all the way through uh, to the goal. Actually go to a shoot. Target called for Coward Holly. That just settles down, regroups, and just settles into his shot. Tries to make oh. another hit and does so. That target came pretty quick and pretty oh. fierce out and low. And Matt was on it straight away, as was Kovacochi on his. They're both on eight. Nathan Hales now can go to 11. Oh. Shot from Reska to stay within one oh. of Mahelba and Hales. And lip tack with a miss, so maybe some distance could be created oh. if Matt Coward Holly can hit this one. He doesn't. And that's a sorry miss for oh. Matt, I'm sure. He's feeling exactly the same in his own mind. Nathan's missed that one. So Mahelba now can make this 12. Blam, does so. Great shot. with another miss again is it the conditions oh. is that that miss that he was sure his words were obvious he turned to the jury and said well it's obvious I hit it has that affected him or is it just oh. the conditions of the floodlights here and the the nighttime occasion maybe just not feeling comfortable oh. I'm sure not everyone is enjoying shooting in the dark well under the floodlights who knows? Could be a whole host of things as well. We have been saying it's, it's been a long year, so if someone was oh. to say, yeah, I'm pretty tired and looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> if, of course, you do celebrate Christmas, we appreciate that oh. everybody does. We've, you've just mentioned, you know, the Olympic champion. 
Matt was the bronze medalist in that final, and oh. both of these two from that Tokyo final struggling a little bit here, still in single figures. The rest of the athletes are all into the double figures. Oh. Nathan Hales, meanwhile, up to 13. Great shooting from Nathan and from Mahelba of Egypt. Oh. Just leveled things on 13. And Daniele Resca, also another great oh. shot for the Italian. Matt now is up to double figures. I'm sure that'll do his confidence. Oh. Maybe just a little helping. Because obviously he's still three shots behind the leaders. And three hits. Oh. But what could save Matt here as this final develops is his bib number. He is wearing bib oh. number one. So meanwhile, Hales and Mahelba both on 14. Daniele Rezka can also go to 14. And that's another hit for the Italian. So just one athlete with all five, and that was Daniele Rezka of Italy. And now we're 10 targets away from the first elimination. So if you are just joining us, welcome. This is the trap men's final at the ISSF World Cup final, live for you from Doha in Qatar. My name is Rory McAllister. I'm your commentator alongside Eleanor Allen. <coughs> so some very dramatic music oh. that's blasting out the speakers in the background as Matt Coward-Holly takes another hit. Hit from the left hander Nathan Hales up to 15. Oh. Very low target, very quick to react as well from a helper. He's shooting so well as the Egyptian, and he's also on 15 now. Nothing to separate them on 15. That last oh. target. Howard Holly is having a bit of a disaster out there oh. this evening. So he has a possible total of 14. So already Hales and Mahelba And now, well, that means Nathan Hales is certainly safe. Oh. Certainly looking that way. This time with a hit, that's 12. He just needs to keep on hitting. Because really now it's between Coward Holly and Liptak, perhaps. We'll just have to see how this unfolds, but bib numbers will come into play in terms of survival. Ah. It can be quite cruel when. Um you finish the qualification in the first position oh. and you're the first or even second to be eliminated. But the new rules are like that. Because oh. in the older days we obviously used to shoot qualification and, and the score would count towards the final, but oh. not for some time now. The scores start from zero and you just get the bib numbers. Yeah, it was around the time of the London 2012 games, was it? It was the last time you're able to, are you able yes. to get it was that yes. sort of period you're able to carry it forward so yeah I, I always find it a little bit sad when the person with the highest oh. score have been worked so hard over the last two days and after shooting mid 20 in ski to 25 oh. targets in the day, you go out i think yeah they changed i'm pretty sure that's when they changed the the rules oh. around the 2012 because i know stina anderson who was a rifle shooter she under the old rules I think oh. would have taken a minute, but of course, because of what happens, it all it all 
ball starts to, to slip away. So Matt Coward Holly on 14, Kovacochi now on 15. And Coward Holly now needs Liptak to miss if he's to stay in this final. Nathan Hales, meanwhile, the second Briton in this final on 19. She doesn't, it's a hit. So Matt Coward Holly, who came into this final ranked number five, could be leaving this final because we've got five more targets to go. And at the moment, it's not looking great for Coward Holly. A maximum of 19 is available, and you've got to keep an eye on Jiri Liptak and also Kovacochi, all both on 15. And as Eleanor was saying, Matt Coward Holly, who finished top of the qualification scores. Oh. So about up to 15. Kovacochi now on 16. Oh. Nathan Hales on 20, Mahelba on 20, Daniele Resca oh. of Italy also on a total of 20. And Liptak now can go joint 16 hits with Kovacochi, which will once again leave oh. Matt Cowardly under immense pressure in order to keep on hitting to try and stay in this final. Oh. That's a great shot from the Britain. Oh. So Cowan Holly can get up to 19, as can Liptak, but Jimmy Liptak wearing oh. bit number six and still to shoot, so the advantage is with the Czech shooter at the moment. Oh. Still some targets to go though before we have the elimination process. Oh. Miss there called for Raska, so oh. that's the first miss in a long while. Oh. Matt is back in his stride. Oh. Just a few targets to go. Nathan Hales, two ducks in a row, 22. Oh. And likewise for Mahelba as well, also now on 22. Oh. Reska meanwhile recovers after that last miss oh. with a hit this time. Lip tack the Olympic champion, also with now well, three hits in a row. Pressure once again on Matt Coward Holly, the Tokyo oh. bronze medalist. Now for Coward Holly oh. to stay in the final. That's a miss for Nathan. He needs Liptak to miss. And oh. Nathan Hales, as Ellen has just said, has just missed that last target. So Mahelba now goes in the front as the clear leader. Oh. I think that might be for the first time in this trap final. We do actually have a, a clear leader. So Matt Coward Holly now needs to hit this to stay in and does so. So he's on 19. So if Liptak were to miss his, and Kovacochi likewise, but no, he doesn't. That's a hit. So that's 20. So the only way Matt Coward Holly now can survive in this final is for Yuri Liptak, the Olympic champion, to miss his target. Oh. So here 
is Daniele Resca, back at 23, does so. Up steps the Olympic champion, shooting to stay in this track final. And it's a miss. So what a relief for Matt Coward, Holly, would you believe it? Just before you actually go ahead and say this is never going to happen, surely Coward Holly's going to be leaving this final. It just goes to show you, you just have to wait right to the end to see how it's going to unfold. It's the Olympic champion, actually, who's leaving the final first in sixth place. And Matt Coward Holly, the bronze medalist from Tokyo, survives. So we're now left with two Britons in this final one Egyptian, one Italian, one Slovakian. Five targets, so Matt Coward Holly's really got to try and up his game here in order to get back in the mix because he's already one behind Kovacocci. Here he is shooting now. Oh. Well, with five targets to go, and oh. he's only got one cartridge rather than two that they use in qualification. And as you've just seen, anything can happen. Too early to say. Oh. But. What an unusual bit of ball. Wasn't expecting that, were you? Wow. I just always talk about oh. what happens in front of me and just follow what's going on. And just like Roy Walker used to say on the British show catchphrase, see what you see. Daniele Resca up to 24. Matt Coward Holly now. Oh trying to make it 21 and as Eleanor was saying a few seconds ago he's just started to find perhaps a bit of rhythm oh. and perhaps just trying to banish the memory of that earlier target which Matt was pretty sure he hit and was called as a verified miss amongst the jury and a few referees Nathan Hales meanwhile up to 25 Kovacocci on 22 oh. oh miss there so now goes level again with Nathan Hales Oh. Reska also now joins on 25. Oh. That's a miss for Coward Holly. Oh. Coward Holly can now only reach 23. So the only oh. way now of surviving is if Kofakochi makes a miss at some point. But at the same time, oh. Coward Holly would need to hit two and Kofakochi has got to miss two in order for the Britain to survive. Oh. So it's looking like it's stacked against Matt at the moment. Daniele Resca misses that one on 25. Oh. Coward Holly takes a hit. Oh, and Kovacocci misses that one. Would you believe it? The Slovakian has missed. It gives another bit of glimmer of hope for Matt Coward Holly. Oh. And if Matt was to make the next stage of this final, he really is a shooter with nine lives, I think. Oh. So, Mahalba, meanwhile. Great shot. Pass that one into oblivion. Now, if Kovacocci here misses, then Matt will survive again on bib number. But he's hit that, so Matt Coward Holly will be leaving this final. Nathan Hales, meanwhile, with a solid hit. He's on 28. Great shooting from the 27 year old. Ah. Oh. Now on 28, and Resco will now try to make it 27. And we have our next elimination in fifth place, representing Great Britain. It's the Tokyo bronze medalist, is Matt Coward Holly, who only missed three targets in qualification, finished on 122. Pretty much the rest had to go to a shoot off because there were some tied scores, but for Matt Coward Holly, it's the end of the road for this World Cup final because it's only the top four that are going through to the Super Final on Saturday. 
So I think Matt there just chatting with Marco Michelli, the coach, about that earlier target, which obviously would have made all the difference because had that target been called a hit, Matt would be on 24 and his bib number would have saved him. Kovacocci would have been leaving the final, so I'm sure that will get reviewed. Meanwhile, for Slovakia, Kovacocci now up to 25. Oh. So now the next elimination will come pretty soon. Oh. To 35 targets. Red flag. That's a miss for Kovacocci. And with a possible total of 28 for Kovacocci. It could all be over in just a few minutes, or a few seconds even, should I say, because if Reska goes up to 29, then it's an impossibility for Kovacocci to survive. Oh. Sometimes, as Eleanor was saying earlier on, it can sometimes be a bit cruel. Oh. ...it out. Does mean Nathan will get a medal, also means he'll make the oh. super final. Kovacocci also will make the super final. The top four from the men, the top four from the women oh. go ahead to play in that super final as there will be eight athletes, not six. But unfortunately, I was told that Team G was leaving, so they will not stay for the super final. Because of flying home, okay, yes. so, so whilst Nathan Hales then did secure his place. Oh. Zanon has just informed us, it turns out he will be heading home. So it means then that someone will get a bye through to oh. the actual final. So perhaps, and it's not going to be Matt Coward Holly. So no. therefore, Jiri oh. Liptak, just by virtue, then surely. Top four will go through, so it's probably the shooter in the fifth position. Oh, oh that's my famous thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've just been told it's top four from qualification. Okay, so it won't be marked, so it'll go down the list, no doubt. Or from actual qualification on the day. Everything's just being being cleared up, really, around these super finals. So uh, we'll just get back to this trap final for now and worry about that another time. Ah. So our next elimination in this final then. Decent performance up until the last few targets and just started to wobble. So Marianne Kovacocci of Slovakia leaves this final in fourth place here in Doha and Qatar. And we're now down to the final three. So first, second and third will now be battled out between Italy, Great Britain and Egypt. So Mahelba at the top, 33 hits to Nathan Hales of Great Britain on 32, alongside Daniele Raska of Italy, who's also on 32 hits. So those are the countries guaranteed a medal. And the trophy that's being handed out at the medal ceremonies. Trophy ceremonies, really. And some prize money too. So Nathan Hales just one behind oh. Mahelba. Now level for now, but with Mahelba still to shoot. Oh. walk away with the men. We just now have to wait to see what colour is going to be. So Nathan Hales left-handed now goes in to take this shot to try and get once again level for the moment. And for a matter of seconds, it's not meant to be for now. That's a miss. 
So Mahelba now can put some distance between the other two. Oh. So Daniele Resca on 34. Nathan Hales now in the bronze medal position. And he's missed that one. That's the second miss in a row for Nathan. So is this a case of pressure or the conditions getting to him? Still finish on a total of 35. Meanwhile, Mahelba's also shown that he's also human as well and has missed. Daniele Resca now on 35. Oh. 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 That's a shame. So Nathan Hales, three misses in a row, is the occasion of the World Cup final, just got to the 27 year old Britain. You should never be disappointed to actually even be within the medal race, but Nathan Hales now confirmed in third place. So now just shooting for pride, we'll try and hit this last target. Meanwhile, Resca for Italy has gone in front by one hit. And Hales destroys that last clay. What a shoot, what a shot. I think he shot his super final. He's just a shame about the last sequence. So well done, Nathan. So 36 from the Helba. Daniele Resco with 37. Massive cheers from the Italians. Also from Conti as well, the coach. And Nathan Hales of Great Britain came into this final, one of two Britons alongside Matt Coward Holly. But it's Nathan Hales who walks away with the bronze trophy. It will be awarded to him at the medal ceremony and also some prize money too, I believe. Meanwhile, we're now down to the final two. So a great day for Nathan Hales here in Doha in Qatar, a bronze medalist for Great Britain. So Abdul Aziz Mahelba of Egypt on 36, only one behind the Italian Daniele Resca, who in the early stages of this trap final was shooting fairly well, just a couple off the pace, a couple off the leaders, and it just crept back into this final and managed to scramble in front. And now it's the Italian who leads, and it's his honour to shoot now and does so. So stays within one. And pressure now on Mahelba over these last 10 targets to decide gold and silver. I wonder if we had any um, family members actually um, getting medals in separate disciplines at the same at the same event that would be an interesting statistic oh. there might be history in the making here oh. so abdul aziz mahelba on 38 daniele resca on 39 oh. Once again, I think there's going to be cheers all around, Eleanor, every single time Resca actually makes a hit here. There's certainly more Italians who have gathered to watch the conclusion of this trap final than there are those from Egypt, or at least the Egyptians are certainly staying quite oh. quiet and reserved. I think Team, it team Italy had a stronger but, well, numbers of participants oh. in this competition, so... Yeah, they've certainly come here with more athletes, yeah. and they've, they've, they've come with a very strong squad as well. So Resco with his hand up. I think he was given a miss though. Huh. Yes, and clearly there was dust in the sky. So that was obvious. So we now have five targets left per athlete. We're into the final stage.
are at the ISSF World Cup final. The only way we can go to a shoot-off is if there is a tie. Now, certainly in terms of scores, and we were talking earlier, this isn't that far off. Maybe a couple of hits, perhaps, you know, of, of daylight conditions. Only a few seconds ago, I was actually thinking potentially to finish uh, on 46 out of 50, which is remarkable given the light conditions. Indeed. And do you think perhaps as well it's just down to your approach and attitude coming into this one? In, in, what, what I'm saying is if you're already annoyed before you did it, thinking, I don't really want to do this. Then you're not going to do well. Absolutely. Well. As you know, this is a discipline which requires mental strength. And if you doubt yourself, then it shows on your scores. I'm just wondering if some of that crept in. Yes, this also went through my mind about the women's final, and it must have been just that feeling of uneasiness and thinking, oh my God, if we're shooting in the dark, that affected the, um, the ladies' final earlier on, because men have certainly not struggled as much, or some of them haven't struggled at all. You wouldn't know it was uh, dark, and, we, and they were oh. shooting under floodlights. So Mahelba makes it 44, Daniele Resca can also do the same, levels up again, and with two targets left now, this is shot target 49 for Mahelba. And gets that one on 45. Uh -oh. And Reska once again rescues his final shot getting up to 25 so real pressure now on Mahelba of Egypt takes a big intake of breath settles in is this the shot that could differentiate the gold and silver trophy well he's delighted that he's hit it if Reska misses this and he's silver and he has so after a massive comeback from Daniele Reska and the Egyptians just running over there and the coach just come to love with the final shot of this trap final. It was down to Daniele Resca, the Italian, just to try and level up and try and take us to a shoot off. It wasn't meant to be. The Italian missed that final target, which means now he has to settle for second place and silver. What a final. Nathan Hales of Great Britain on the right, third place with bronze. And Daniele Resca of Italy in second place with the silver. And Abdul Aziz Mahelba of Egypt with the gold. So Nathan Hales just raising his shotgun up as he's announced as the bronze medalist. So Daniele Resca, so near yet so far. Once again, a trap final has come down to the final shots. And it wasn't meant to be for the Italian today in terms of gold. But what a day for this Egyptian. What a performance. Just was up there with the leaders from the early stages and then just managed to creep in front, then was level with Reska for such a long time over those last 10 to 15 targets. And it was separated by one. That's how it finished. Nathan Hales with the bronze on 34 hits. Daniele Reska, silver with 45. And just one target in front, Abdul Aziz Mahelba of Egypt with the gold on 46. That's how it finished on day three here in Doha at the World Cup final. We'll be back tomorrow for day four. We'll kick off at 11.15 local time here in Doha for the final of the 25-metre pistol women. Then 1.30 local time, the final of the 50-metre three positions for men. 2.45 for the final of the three positions for women. And then 5 p.m. for the 25-meter rapid-fire pistol men's final. That's today's coverage. Other than that, that concludes today. So from myself, Rory McAllister, from Eleanor Allen as well. It's cheerio from us. Goodbye. Goodbye. And we'll see you tomorrow. First final, 11:15 here on ISSF TV. Join us on YouTube and Facebook. Cheerio for now. See you tomorrow.
So join us back here in Qatar at the World Cup final and well we've just witnessed the trap final and again history was made under the floodlights here in Doha a very very memorable occasion and Abdul well I mean what can we say other than congratulations it came down to the final shot yeah thank you thank you so much it was uh, it was a very hard final um, all the shooters are uh, very strong shooters, champions. Um, very close until the end, until the last target. You don't know who's going to win. It was amazing. And in the middle part there as well, there was Nathan Hales, there was yourself, there was uh, yeah. Daniele Resca. You're all kind of level and, yeah. and all there or thereabouts. Yeah, it's changing every every two, three target. It changes, but uh, at the end, final is, uh, you know, keep changing until the last two, three targets. And it's a game of uh, who will stay till the end. At last uh, two, three targets, uh, they are the most important. If you are there, you have to keep uh, fighting, keep shooting until the end, and then we see what's going to happen. Did you think a shoot off was going to happen? Uh, actually, I was not counting uh, accurately. I, uh, I knew I had a chance uh, if I hit the last target, either I win or a shoot off. I didn't know exactly how was it, but uh, I understood when I heard people celebrating and I understood that it was uh, finished. Yes, because um, as you took that final shot and it was a hit, yeah. you really did sort of punch the air. And was that you thinking that you'd, you'd taken, no, because, taken first place? Uh, yeah, no, 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 it wasn't like that because this target, I, uh, I started a little bit late. So uh, yeah, for me, you know, it wasn't the best way to start to, to shoot the target. So when I uh, hit it, I was happy I broke this target. I felt this is the target of the competition. And then like that, and then Reska steps up, misses, and it's silver for him and gold for you. So well done. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to see you. So that concludes our coverage uh, here for this gold medal interview. I just want to add. Oh, sure. What makes this uh, medal special to me is that, uh, I don't know, it happened uh, before in the history of uh, World Cup final. Skeet competition, so I think this is uh, something you know. I wanted to win this medal, uh, not only for myself, but to be both of us in the World Cup final. I think it's uh, it's history. Well, it is, yes. Yeah, sorry, and I was just trying not to give away the result of the Skeet final, actually. But hey, uh, it, 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 it's all out in the I open have to now. That. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, because yeah. we were sort of thinking the same thing. Commentary: it's like a gold medal and a silver medal, yes, exactly. and it's a wonderful day for your family and a wonderful day for Egypt as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so okay. much. Thanks very much.